we will discuss queues today, uh, which is a data structure uh, that works in first and first out manner. Uh, so I can visualize it as follows in a queue, the regular queue. We have a front end and a back end where people come in from the back and go out uh, from the front. Right? So if any person will enter the queue from the back, enter and queue, and leave, depart the queue from the front, the queue for depart. Uh, yes, so uh, as the visualization already uh, did it for us, we got the logic I believe first in first out. So this lady has entered uh, the first compared to the others, so it, she will be leaving first, first in first out. Uh, it makes you use it in many applications uh, such as uh, jobs in a single pr processor uh, CPU uh, uh, we, we generally have many processes going on inside our computer at a given time uh, but there is a single CPU or a finite as a few amount of CPUs so we need to select the jobs uh, to send to CPU and they they are generally prioritized by other factors like the importance then we need to do priority queues but assume that uh, we just do uh, the job uh, scheduling based on the timing uh, okay Principling may be a direct application, so maybe more clear uh, to us, where we have a single printer and main processes are sending data to that. So normally, a process sending calling print functions should stop, uh, but it is not an efficient way, so that process goes away. But uh, what it does is it uh, puts its uh, document to be printed into this spooling software of the printer uh, and it knows that it will eventually get printed uh, based on its order in the uh, printer spool application uh, and similarly packages traveling around computer networks uh, go into some sort of queues uh, yeah so let's implement a queue but before that, uh, let's uh, just use a queue for uh, clarification. Uh, so initially, when a queue is created, I need two pointers, front and back. Uh, so they just point to nothing. When I enqueue five, uh, it's so basically initially. Let's open the pen as well. The back will also be five. I also have this back pointer. Uh, when I enqueue the next number, it will enqueue from the back, remember? So back will be updated, not front. So this will still be front 5, will still be the front, but back is 3. And then back is 2 when 2 is enqueued. Then when a dequeue takes place, remember departure happens from the front. So back still stays the same, which is 2. But front is, this is gone. So front is 3 now. Okay, that is the logic, and at any given time, like at this time, if I want to get front, I will uh, get uh, the value 2 and put it into variable b. So this is some call by reference action happening here. Uh, a very simple application. Uh, actually, yeah, an application, a dummy application. We read characters uh, in order and put them into a queue, so if your word is Ali uh, then what happens is uh, uh, as we read, so first A comes to our queue, then L comes and then I comes, so this I is the back and this A is the front, so Okay, so it is really not a good application. Maybe it was better. Palindrome, uh, which is a string of characters that reads the same from left to right and right to left. 
so I can solve this problem with only a stack actually. So if your word is uh, something like A B C D whatever, uh, you put half of the first half of the word to a stack A B, and then you go to the pop mo mode. Uh, and you pop this and compare it with the next character not the same so not palindrome but if it was abba in the music group instead of that then b would match with this b and a would match with this a so it can be done with only a stack but since we are in this q chapter uh, i will also use a q uh, so what we do here is instead of going until the half uh, going to the until the middle uh, for pushing to a stack I will push everything into a stack like in this case so this is already here A B C B D so this is the stack meanwhile I will also push these entries to a Q as well okay so A then B comes remember I NQ from the back then C comes so B comes, this is the current back, and when D comes, this is the current back. So now, now that my structures are ready, namely Q and stack, so I will pop from stack, which will give me the top element, and I will dequeue from the Q, which will give me the front element. They are not the same, so quit. But if they were like Abba case, uh, happening here if so I have B and A so let's rewrite for Abba situation I have A B B A in my stack and in the queue I would have again A B B A uh, and when I pop from stack and I the queue from Q A A okay continue B versus B okay B versus the second B okay and the Q versus pop they are the same so we have a palindrome so what we described can be implemented simply basically every character is inserted to a Q as well as to a stack and then I make uh, uh, first I read the front element of the Q uh, to this variable using call by reference also read the top element of the stack to this variable and then if they are the same if they are not the same I just quit because uh, so this will create this for loop and I will return false however if they are the same I update my queue and stack with by getting rid of those two elements and repeat I have also a mm, recursive solution that has nothing to do with the queue but I like this solution a lot so for instance if your word is uh, kabak for instance the recursive idea is this kabak is pal palindrome if abba is palindrome and abba is palindrome if b is palindrome and b is always palindrome because a one letter word is always a palindrome right so this is the logic so let's incorporate that logic into our code with a different word here rotator uh, so I begin with a left pointer 0 and right pointer 6 so I have 7 characters here so I will shrink stuff from left and right so currently let's skip the base case if the left R and the right R if they are the same then I have this situation where my rotator is palindrome so I will test otato Okay, so to make that possible I will call the same function recursively by shifting left and to right so it will be 1 and by shifting right hand to left which would be 5 so basically I am now dealing with potato here this, uh, actually I will give the same string as an input but the indices uh, will point to O and O uh, and whenever I have a mismatch, so assume I had to rotate it here, so this was an I instead of O, then O and I was different, were different, so 
I would just return false and all the recursion would stop immediately. So I would shrink my uh, string from left and right one by one and in the end, so in this case, left and right, so it will be 1 and 5. In the next iteration, they would be 2 and 4. And in the next iteration, they would be both 3 and 3. So meaning that left is equal to right. So I am in that middle character returned to because I came there successfully. But I also need this sign. So only equal equal is not good because when your initial string has a length of odd size, has a length of 5 for instance, which is an odd number, then you will go like this 0, 4, 1, 3, until it is still, sorry, no problem with odd. So the problem will happen with an even number of, with even lengths, like upper case again. Uh, 0, 3, okay, then 1, 2, okay, and then in the base case, so they will never agree on the same number if you are dealing with an even length string. So this right pointer will go 1 to 1, and left pointer will go to 2. So they will basically zigzag. Uh, so to understand that, I need to understand whether left is bigger than uh, right okay anyway so let's come back to Q and let's now implement uh, the Q so I have so far used the services using NQ and DQ let's now Im implement them I will use a pointer based implementation first where I need two pointers front pointing to front element back to back I can actually get rid of the front pointer if I use a circular linked list where the last element, which is the back, last dot next gives me the first element. Okay, um, but let's stick with a regular linked list, uh, which we have already discussed in a previous class. So every node is a Q node, but it's uh, going to be uh, attached uh, to its. It is going to be connected to its to the next node, okay, like this. Uh, and let's now build stuff based on this uh, linking. So for a non-empty queue like this queue, two, four, one, seven. In this queue, two is the oldest item, and uh, seven is the youngest item. So it is in the back. Uh, and I want to insert an even younger item like three. What I will do is. I will create a, so they have already done it here. This creates a memory location, which is a complete random memory location. But I will link it to my queue, don't worry. So I allocate this memory location, then this I will point this using something called new pointer. Uh, then the next of this is null, so I need to set it explicitly using this line then back pointer is already looking at seven but it won't be uh, so I need to update I need to add this thing to my list or my queue so to make it possible back dot next which was a null previously is now three so this line is also done now I still have one more important line my new back is this okay not this so I need to have access to this tree so back pointer is a new pointer Basically, this now happens. If your queue was empty initially, then your back pointer as well as the front pointer, they are null by definition because there is nothing to point to. Uh, so you allocate the memory, you set the item of it to 3 or whatever value you want, then you refer to this guy as your new pointer and then you uh, make your front and back point to this guy. Be careful Bef for a non empty queue. I don't touch front at all because it is a total, it is non null, it is not null anyway. But here I also need to update front pointer because a one element node will have the same front and back. 
for the dequeuing action, uh, now I will deal with the front end. I will not look at the back at all. So this, sorry, this is the front current. So this is my initial input two four one seven. So I will deal with this guy only. So I call this. I will access this through a different pointer, just to memory cleaning in the end. So it is not so crucial. The crucial line is probably this. So the current. Currently, initially, the front pointer is this, right? So this is the initial situation, don't see this thing. But now I want to update the front pointer from here to 4. To make it front will be front.next. This.next. So this just happened and this got cancelled after I execute this statement. Then I have this thing hanging around. Uh, I don't have access to this node anymore because front pointer and back pointer is the, are the only things that are available to the outside world so I, I can't really access here so now just let, let's get, get rid of it completely like temp.next would be null so again not a very crucial statement but still let's do it and then delete this uh, node or whatever data it has so th this Currently, it doesn't make any sense because it's just one integer, but you may be uh, storing megabytes of data in a given node. So then this delete is kind of mandatory to save up your memory. Uh, uh, because in C++, we don't have an automatic garbage collector or anything. In Java, it shouldn't be a problem, but yeah, so this is the way to go with C++. Deletion from a queue with one item is uh, similar, but we need some uh, little update to our pointers uh, because in the end I will be uh, getting rid of uh, this node. So front and back pointer they literally point to nothing. So I uh, explicitly set them to null. Uh, it will be useful to understand. The emptiness of the queue uh, and also I need to clean up the memory so let's implement the queue with those things in mind uh, this is a queue node very similar to a linked list node it has an item as well as the next pointer so it creates the same implementation as a linked list node so nothing special here by default uh, so these are the settings during in the constructor item is the e which is by default the object default and uh, next is equal to n uh, assigned and the default value of n is null so let's implement stuff uh, again I will have access to back and front pointer so these are private so I will not literally uh, touching them but I will uh, I will uh, interact with them through uh, public functions here uh, so initially back and front are null, meaning that I have an empty queue. For the destructor, I will be calling the dequeue that I will show you later uh, until the queue becomes empty, and dequeue will do the deletes, uh, the memory cleaning within itself. So all the memory will be uh, released to me once I get, go out of the scope of this uh, queue object is empty uh, is so I will check whether back is null or not I can also I could have done front pointer equal to null as well so it is the same effect let's implement NQ which we have already discussed uh, so uh, the, literally uh, I want to place this new item so I will first allocate memory using new uh, which will give me this block of memory in anywhere in memory then I will set the item of it to new item which is 3 uh, and the next of it would be null again so I am just repeating stuff uh, here I separate stuff into two cases this is the regular case where I already have some stuff in my queue so what I need to do is this current back will not be back anymore uh, so the next of this is normally null because it was the back but it is not null anymore, it will be this, so this line does it, and now back pointer would be this guy.
because this is the new back and the youngest item in my queue so it will get out the last uh, in the so the, it's FIFO logic first and first out so it will not get out anytime soon this will get out sometime soon uh, so we will see it in the queue if my queue was empty however initially so if is empty then I do stuff above by creating this uh, memory with the item in it and then uh, back pointer will be that, that thing which is the common case so it is out of the block but the important thing is front will also be updated in this special case the queue so FIFO first and first out so two must go out as we have already agreed so to make that possible I will uh, first point to this guy for later memory cleaning using temp pointer now uh, <coughs> so this is the uh, one item case again let's leave it uh, to the end so this is the regular case where I have a non empty I have a queue with more than one items so I already have uh, front dot next so I will use it to update my front pointer to the second item of the alt queue so this will be my first item now so front equal to front dot next basically this was my front now I don't want it as my front this will be my new front front dot next so 4 will be my new front so this is the thing uh, and also then I set the next of temp to null and I delete this from the memory again this might be holding megabytes of data so it is good to do this uh, in case you have only one item just before the queuing then uh, I will still point to this guy using temp pointer uh, and then uh, there is no next so I can't do front equal to front dot next because it is null uh, so I will literally set front to null and back to null okay this the queue is going to call the DQ I have just implemented this one but before doing that it will save the front the current front so in this example it would be this number two uh, to into a reference called Q front so from the cover function I will have access to that value which is two uh, okay and get front uh, will only do this line it will see this front uh, item through the front pointer uh, and it will not change the queue at all so it will not call to the queue and notice that in all these functions I don't do any action if the queue is already empty so I will actually throw an exception like uh, warn the user or just quit the program depending on your application so this is empty test is also something trivial and something important as well uh, with a circular linked list everything can be still implemented all you have to do is wherever you see front pointer like here you will replace it with back pointer dot next because you will only have back pointer in your life now now I will go to an array based implementation so this tactic we have already done with uh, stacks so pointer based implementation is good uh, to go especially they, if they are very memory friendly because you do this pay on demand action uh, you locate memory on demand whenever you need it with an array based implementation you have this fixed size length which is hard to come up with and then you fill it uh, so it is a disadvantage of an array based implementation for any data structure including Q but the advantage is arrays come as a block co contiguous block of memory blocks of memory so if they are very cache friendly uh, you can really uh, be very fast with them so I will first suggest you this regular array based implementation front and back uh, initial they are going to be zero but in a middle stage so I have inserted two so front still stays as this back then I 
insert four back is this then I insert one back is this then back becomes three so this is your back the problem with this approach is uh, back always moves to right as I insert so it will be coming here and I will still remove items then front is going to come to right hand side so I may come up at a scenario like this so in this scenario there is no place for back to go so it seems like I am full but I am not indeed because I have been uh, moving the front pointer to left as well during the queue operations but with a naive implementation uh, this is the way it is so front will be 47 here and back with be 49 and I will stop here although I have 40 0 to 46 available to me I can make that possible by shifting elements to left as I dequeue stuff but then I might have on elements to deal with in the worst case so the dequeue will take on time which is unacceptable because dequeue is just a constant time operation uh, with just uh, dequeue here see this is our dequeue we just do some pointer stuff which is a constant time so I don't want any for loops in my life so this is not a good solution solution can be a circular array which is it shouldn't intimidate you it is a regular array except you have this modular arithmetic operation so if your array is called a uh, we normally do a i to get the i to element right a i uh, but now to implement a circular array you will just mod this number with the size of the array n so let's see this here in this case n is what 8 okay so this is number 7 then uh, so what happens when I feed 7 to you 7 mod 8 so this would be 8 always 7 mod 8 is still 7 so I will have access to the 7th item but now when I want to access the 8 when I set i equal to 8, 8 mod 8 is 0, I will be looking at index 0, okay? When I want to look at the 9th, when I set i equal to 9, for some reason, the 9 mod 8 would give me 1, so basically I will be looking at this slot. So this is all it is actually for the circular array, it is a regular array so let's see if it is enough for us to implement a queue uh, so I will begin two integers will help me uh, implement my queue uh, initial back pointer is this and front pointer is this so back is max minus q in this case max is 8 so 7 back is this b uh, so why I start from one left it will be uh, clear when I do insert basically insertion and queuing will take place from the back this is the logic so I will advance back so in this case back becomes 7 plus 1 8 mod 8 which is 0 so back is this now I can insert my number I don't know 5 I insert 5 here then let's do one more insertion like I insert 4 I so at this time front is 0 back is 0 again for enqueuing I will look at I will update back on so back becomes this and number 4 comes here then let's insert 1 back becomes 2 and I so this is 2 and item is 1 I put 1 into index 2 uh, so back is this let's do one more insertion like I then back becomes 2 plus 1, 3. So I am here, I, am, I will insert 7. So this is my current uh, queue now with 5, 4, 1, 7 in it. Let's do a dequeue deletion. Remember, dequeue departure takes place from the front. So I will update the front on me. Basically, what I will do is I will just advance F from here to here. So I don't care if I have some value here because I have already allocated this space so all I care is the point of F so now I come back to this uh, pause okay from that thing so I 
selected the elements deliberately to end up with this scenario so it's kind of a zoom of something I did above so 5 is gone, I have 5 here but it doesn't really matter currently Q looks like this I have 4 in the front and I have 7 in the back if I delete something I will I can't just delete number 7 or number 1 I will delete from the front this is the idea of a Q so first in first side relative to 1 and 7 4 was the first the oldest guy so I will update front to here so I am now here and I do insertion here so insertion happens from the back so I will advance this here and I insert number 9 here okay so this is your uh, Q now however this is there is a problem the problem is that I cannot decide whether Q is empty or full it is ambiguous so normally if so this is an empty Q right this was the last element and I to delete it remember the part here from front so I will advance front front comes here so basically back plus one up to mod up to circularity so back plus one is from front if it is the case then I have an empty queue okay it looks reasonable but the same thing happens for the full queue as well so this is my queue I will NQ number nine here so NQ from the back remember so back advances here and I put nine here okay now be careful back plus one up to circularity four plus one five it is front so the same statement is okay for back uh, for emptiness and for fullness so I can solve this problem with three simple tactics I can keep a separate count uh, count integer count in my class like a data member which would be increased as I NQ decrease as I DQ uh, yeah so it is as simple as that then I will test whether count is zero or not for emptiness and whether count is max or not for fullness I can keep a boolean flag similar to this idea which will be made false with every DQ because if you DQ something anything it will definitely not be full right so it is the logic and it will be made true upon an NQ operation so I need some more condition here and the extra array location is that I will have a dummy location so I will have this one plus one and I will use it to understand emptiness so let's implement the queue using the count tactic first okay so all are as good as any you know, as good as so there is nothing to be preferred here yeah. so this implementation will be using the count tactic uh, there will be an array regular array but using modular arithmetic I will make it circular and so let, let's go uh, initially count is zero back is max minus five and zero front is zero as we discussed here right here uh, so is empty is count zero or not here I don't have is full function but if I had that then I would be checking count equal to max q or not uh, nq uh, actually these two statements are exactly the same as I have discussed here okay so nothing to worry about I will just skip them and addition I will just do count plus plus and for the Q again this is the same statement the Q is about playing with the front so I will advance front and then I will do count minus minus and this the Q will first remember the result in the front of your Q and save it into this reference variable called Q front and then do this thing so I could just call this function as well here and get front will only read it, it will not update, that's why it is constant by the way because you won't be updating any data member of your class in this case for instance I am updating this data member called count so it can't be constant so a little C++ injected in the middle of conversation okay so is full let's also talk about this second approach initial cases initially is full is false obviously there is nothing in the queue as you do an insert okay so 
uh, where is this happening so this is uh, when I do I'm queuing I will do it from the back so back is going to advance here so let's just go to this figure and I will put the value item to the back position then be careful now if back plus one is front then I am full so set the full to true okay and so yeah it is true and for the dequeuing you will just do your regular dequeue so in this case dequeuing is about advancing front right I advance front here and then I will just blindly set is full to false so I don't use any condition at all because you have dequeued something it is impossible for your queue queue to be full anymore okay so with that in mind is full function will just return this is fully equal to true or not and is empty you need to first verify that is full is false so you will uh, get rid of this case and then check whether back plus one is front so unfortunately back plus one is front here but this is not empty but don't worry because the first condition here has already eliminated this situation okay so then I can safely check whether back plus one is equal to front or not and if it is still the case then I have an empty queue which, which it is uh, and for the array extra array based thing so there is this dummy location that I will not put any uh, valuable uh, value uh, so in case uh, of fullness test I will just test whether back plus one is equal to front or not now it can uh, work and I can implement so now these are the array based stuff okay uh, and the obvious disadvantage is this thing so what is this max queue a big problem with the pointer based tactic I don't have that issue right I just create uh, I just create stuff on the fly and then link it to my existing queue so it is that that's why it's probably a good way to go in general so let's try to do the pointer using a link using the link this class explicitly so I won't update my next pointers I will call insert and remove of link this so is it efficient let's uh, think about it so this is our queue I just cropped that figure here um, so currently the queue has 4, 1 and 7 in it where 4 is the oldest guy uh, so it will be removed first first in first uh, it was in first so when I want to dequeue something this is my link list now this is remember the link list stuff there is this zero node called dummy node dummy head sorry dummy head but uh, I want access to dummy head or anything so I I can call list.0 to go here or list.first to come here. Okay, this is link this stuff. So to dequeue something, I would just call list.first, come here, and see the element for. Then I will call remove of link list using for. So again, this is link this knowledge. This function gets an integer in it or whatever you are holding, and it will remove the first the node with the first occurrence of that value. So since I am providing you the first element, even if I have duplicate force here, I don't care. I will really attack to the correct node, which is the front node, first node. So I, I will remove it through this function and it will set the pointers automatically for me. So now zero will point to this guy and uh, everything will be done automatically for you because your linked list uh, will link this remove implementation will do it for you so you don't have any front and back pointer in this case so it is good and for get front you just currently I have one and seven you just go first that element you return one okay but there is a problem with enqueuing I need to enqueue from the back that is the logic so if I want to insert number 10 I will create a node with 10 in it and I need to insert it so I will call list.insert with value 10 it is also okay but the problem is here I will insert it 
after the last node after p so you also need to provide this p but the problem is in a linked list you don't have a pointer to the last node so you just don't keep it for efficiency it's for maintenance because maintaining maintenance of this would be uh, complicated not that complicated but you don't keep so how do I get this last node basically you need to implement a get last node function in a link list class so it would look something like this your p will begin with the first element then while p dot next is okay it is not now p dot next let's try next uh, with a typo you advance p p is equal to p dot next right so let's digest this for a moment uh, would this bring your p to the very end here yeah it does because p is here p dot next exists so i come here now p dot next doesn't exist so i stop here so i will call but but the problem is this function will take all n time right in the worst case even in the best case you will be touching all the nodes one by one and then uh, the insert itself will take all one time it will just connect this to this etc but the problem is finding this so it will be inefficient moral of the story it will be simple to implement so you shouldn't implement uh, queue with a linked list uh, approach directly you should build your own pointers on all your own next mechanism uh, okay so i have discussed the on the fly <clears throat> Array-based implementation has this fixed size issue, uh, which is bad. Pointer-based implementation, more efficient, more size limit. You can use linked list, which is an easier thing to develop about coding, but it would be inefficient. Uh, and so far, uh, we have also seen heaps and queues, but for this slide, assuming that um, I have only shown you the three structures, these are very related indeed stacks and queues there are some only the extreme points can be accessed with queue front and back and with stack on the top that's why they are very similar actually and push of stack is similar to nq of q etc with a link this all positions are accessible okay yeah, so these are just some nostalgical information now i will uh, solve a problem to you with a Q but before doing that I will solve it first mathematically uh, then I will solve it solve it with a Q the problem is this it's a little bit of historical problem called the surface problem uh, where there are n men captured by enemies and they according to their religion or something they don't want to uh, get captured so they rather die and their religion tells them not to commit suicide so they will instead kill the guy next to them okay so this is a fictional story probably but anyway uh, so the problem is this uh, kill every second man you have n men in a circular arrangement kill every second man so where is the index to sit in order to survive because this guy there would be not no one else to kill him so he will survive he will be a slave probably but still he will survive so let me find this WN winner index when you have n guys in a circular arrangement with one it is one with two it is one with three three with four you should sit at index one etc so what is the pattern here? First pattern is winner should be sitting, must be sitting at an odd index always. Why? Because in the even in the first iteration all the even numbers die, right? So very simple logic. We will start with the first guy. In the first case, two, four, six. So these guys will die anyway. So if you are not that smart, you can just use this tactic to increase your chances of living by half 
Okay, just sit at a um, odd number. But of course, this is not enough. Another pattern is see some resetting happening. I increase by twos, uh, and at some point, I reset to one. So where does this come from? Uh, so to understand this, first go with this uh, approach. Assume you have two to the a man. So the number of man n is a power of two. So this is a special case. Why? Because when you have a power of two, in the first run you will kill the, all the second guys. Right? So two, four, six, eight will go away, and I will come to a smaller problem of the same type. So same type means I I will. So initial problem begins at index one. So since I will go with the same problem, the new problem will still begin at index one, but the size of it will be halved. Okay. So with uh, two to the powers of a, it is very easy to say this: thirty-two, six, sixteen, eight, four, two, one. Okay. So uh, this would be the observation actually. If we have two to the a man in the circle. The one would be the winner index. So let's double check this. This is after the first killing uh, cycle, and then I have same problem. This is the second. This is the second. So one and three leaves, and I am still here. Second of this would be this. So one is the winner. If you have two to the a man, but in general you will be having two any number of men. So let's represent that number by using two to the a plus b, where b is the b. Uh, where b is smaller than the biggest power of 2 that n can have so for our example 13 what is the biggest power of 2 that 13 can uh, accommodate it is 8 right then b would be 5 so here is the clever idea get rid of the 5 people here okay then you will end up with a 2 to the a problem for which I have a solution. The solution here is sit at index 1 in that configuration. So let's get rid of uh, 5 guys. So start from here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now the remaining living guys will be 8. Number of the living guys will be 8 because I got rid of B here. So the remaining guy would be 2 to the power of a, in this case it is 2 to the power of 3. And so, and I am in this problem, this is gone, so I am in this configuration. So this is the survivor index, because you must sit in the beginning of this 2 to the a loop. But what is this? So this is this index b? No, it is not index b, be careful. Uh, <clears throat> you come here by going over every second guy so it is says 2b indeed <clears throat> and the winner will be 2b not 2b god forbid because it is the even number to be killed you will sit at 2b plus 1 so this will be your answer for this problem and uh, based on this observation you can implement a program where you will decompose n into 2 to the a plus b and then you will return to b plus 1. So this decomposal is just a logarithmic operation. Uh, you have n. As I divide it by 2, I will increase my exponent. So if you have uh, 32, for instance, it will be 16 and a1. Then 8, 4, 2. And then 2 is bigger than 1, then 1. Then 1 is not bigger than, so 5. And 5 is 2 to the power of of 32 yeah so this is a very quick uh, computation of a in log n time and, and then I will get rid of that so b is n minus 2 to the a right so from this logic so this is b 2 times b plus 1 as simple as that but I have a good news for you if you don't like math and can't extract this v n on your own then you can solve this problem and even a general problem where you kill every k man. So with the math version, I am 
able to understand the solution by killing every second net. So k is 2. But with this solution that I will show you, uh, I will be killing every k man and still, uh, still solve the problem easily and as easy as four lines of code or five whatever. Uh, so the idea is this, you have your indices, so in my example it goes from 1 to 6, so let's write it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I put them into a queue, our subject today. Uh, so this will be the survivor queue, indeed, so let me be clear about it. When there is more than one item, pe person, people in my queue, I first don't kill, so I skip the k minus one man without killing. So killing would be decuing it from my queue forever. So because this will be the survivor queue. So in my case, k would be two. So this for loop will just do uh, one iteration. Actually, it it won't even make an effort. So this line will execute only one times, one time, once. Uh, so what I do is. This is my queue, this is my front, this is my back. So I dequeue one, but I don't want to get rid of it because it is still living. Because in the first iteration, one will live, two will go, then four will go, and six will go, right? So let's come to, to queue. So one, although I dequeued it, so I have this situation in my hand now, or five, six. I don't get rid of it, so I enqueue it back, but it will enqueue from the back. So this is the new back now, and this is the new front. So I do, I save all the k minus one men without killing, and now I am at the victim index, so the front, and kill it. So they queue and don't enqueue it back. So this just happens. Okay, two is gone. This just happens. Two is gone. Now repeat. 3, the Q and NQ, so 3 will be here, uh, and then 4, kill it, so this just happened, all gone, now 5, the Q and NQ, 5 is here, uh, and 6, class the Q, i.e. kill, so this just happened, now let's continue, 1, so I am not in the killing mode, I am in the for loop mode. So 1, the Q and NQ. So 1 is still surviving. 3 is unfortunately dying, which is true because remember I was here. The second is 3, so let's do it simultaneously. Now 5, I am not in the killing mode, so the Q and Q. In other words, I was here, so this is the first, don't do anything. And this is the second, so kill it. And here I am in the killing mode, so the queue and don't do anything. And now Q that size is one, so I quit the while loop and the remaining die, which is this, will be returned mm. as the winner. So in this case you should sit at index five. Um, okay, so that is that. Uh, and also I should mention BFS. Uh, which is the most popular algorithm in my opinion that uses Q because it is a very popular, very useful, very common algorithm. It uh, helps you explore graphs, traverse graphs efficiently in linear time. Uh, so in my graph video and in my graph lecture, I have given you this uh, algorithm so you may check that out there. Uh, yes, actually, uh, it wraps it up uh, and. Thanks, have a good day.